I am the Lord your God who led you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And who can tell me the first commandment? Put your first finger up. Index finger. You shall have no other gods before me. And then last week we learned number two. So let's stick two fingers up. Do not make for yourself an idol and do not bow down to them. And today is going to be number three. So stick up three fingers and do it kind of like a scout where you take your middle three fingers. So three fingers. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And so that represents, we, we, it's kind of like a scout, you know, on my honor, that the name of God is holy and reverent. And when we speak or take up God's name, we don't do so to where it would go to the ground or it would be in vain. So you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You know, that's a saying in our culture, what's in a name? Our, our names have significance and meaning or history behind them. Sometimes we're named after a loved one. Sometimes uh, we might have the same name in generation after generation where someone's like the, the junior or second or the third or the fourth and so on. But I'm pretty peculiar, I'm pretty picky about my name. I like my name that my parents gave me. Um, my name is Zach or Zachary Thomas Glenn. The Thomas is named for my father. That's my, that's my middle name. And Glenn is our family surname. But uh, the Zachary part is what I was most interested in as a kid because my parents did not spell my name Z-A-C-H-A-R-Y or E-R-Y. They spelled it Z-A-C-K-A-R-Y or for short, Zach, Z-A-C-K. And my parents wanted to make sure that when I was learning how to read, I wasn't confused and tried to say my name Zach. So whenever I was in school or even now to this day when I get mail from, you know, the government or utility companies and they spell my name wrong, it just, it's a pet peeve. It kind of sets me off. I'm like, no, it's Z-A-C-K-A-R-Y-G-L-E-N-N. -E so our names can be special or unique to us. And it can offend us or make us upset when people misuse our names, right? There's also meaning and revelation in our names, that our names can have significance or can call to mind things that God has done. Um, the first child that God had, had blessed me with as a parent but was not born was our daughter Abigail. And she was to be born as a Christmas baby, but she wasn't born. Um, it would have been 2011. And then in 2012, a week before Christmas, our firstborn daughter, Eliana, was born. And her name came from Hebrew in a name book. And the name Eliana means, my Lord has answered. Because she was an answered prayer to us in our grief. And then my secondborn child, Ezra, my son, his name is also from the Hebrew, and the name Ezra means helper. You know who else is named the helper or another who goes by the name the helper? The Holy Spirit. But Ezra's name is helper. His middle name is Jude, Ezra Jude Glenn. Eliana's middle name is Mercy, Eliana Mercy Glenn. So my Lord has remembered and has shown us mercy. Helper, and the name Jude means praise. Because it comes from the word Judah, the name Judah. When Leah had given birth to her fourth son and says, this time I will praise the Lord. So his name means helper of praise or helper with praise or helper who praises God. And I hope that my children will live into their namesake. My name, Zachary, comes similar from Zachariah. My, the Lord has remembered, or my Lord has remembered me. So our names are, are special. And today at Hamilton United Methodist Church, during the children's message, uh, Cynthia Colvin gave a wonderful children's message, and I decided to borrow from it because she encapsulated my message so well that, that I, I decided to borrow it, and I'll, and I'll thank her later. But she said that 
It's like God is saying to us, I'm giving you my name. My name is special. My name is holy. Please take care of my name. Please handle my name with care. God's name is holy, and we must care for His name. And as we care for His name, His name will care for us. Amen? So let's go to the Scriptures. The third commandment, Exodus 27, Deuteronomy 5, 11. Let's say it together. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord your God will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Now, in the first two commandments, God speaks in the first person. He says, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have no other gods before me. Then he says, you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above, the earth below, or the waters beneath. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God. He's speaking in the first person. But now, in the third commandment, God speaks in the third person. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Why? For the Lord your God will not acquit anyone who misuses His name. And I'd have to go back, but I think in the Hebrew that the Lord your God, it's a plural. In other words, it's one Lord, but all of y'all is God. That, that is that this commandment has implications not just for the individual, but for the whole community. That is, when people, when people make a promise or they, they swear an oath in God's name and say they're going to do it onto the Lord and then they don't do it, that is disrespecting the Lord. And the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses His name. In other words, they'll be brought to justice. There'll be consequences for those sins. And we heard last week how the Lord is jealous God. That's why He doesn't want us to make idols, because we were created as idols of Him, as His image bearers. So we don't need idols. And so God gets jealous, and so when we commit idolatry and we sin against God or we go after other gods or we act selfishly, those sins have consequences to the third and the fourth generations. But God is faithful to those who follow His commands to the thousandth generations. Amen? So, you can't slide by when we misuse God's name. He will not acquit anyone who misuses His name. And I think about a crime that often doesn't get a, a, as much notice, but it really makes me angry. And that's when, uh, when someone takes an oath in a court of law, and they put their hand on a Bible, and they say, so help me God, I will tell the truth, right? And then they go, and they lie, and they perjure. They commit perjury, and it taints the entire justice process in that particular case. It makes it to where whatever they say can't be trusted. They have to go back and look at everything else. It makes a mess. We must not misuse the name of the Lord our God because God will not acquit or let anyone get off, you know, without paying the consequences who misuses His name. So you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember De Deuteronomy 6.13, we heard this before on the first commandment. The Lord your God you shall fear or worship, and Him you shall serve. And the third part is what I want us to remember today. By His name you shall swear. There's a you shall behind the you shall not. You shall swear by the Lord your God's holy name. Why? Because God doesn't want us to swear by any other name but God's alone. If we take an oath or make a promise, we only can stand on the name of the Lord our God. That's the only thing that's going to hold us up and give us integrity because all the other names will fail us. Only the Lord your God's name is holy. And it's only by His name alone that we can or shall swear or give allegiance to or make covenant with. But then on the other side, it says in Leviticus 19, 12, you shall not swear by my name falsely or in vain, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. If we swear by God's name in vain, then we will profane the name of God. We will pollute the holiness of God. We will misrepresent the character of and the goodness 
of God. We will sully the truth of God with lies and deception. And when we misrepresent the name of the Lord our God, when other people hear about the name of the Lord our God and they see us, they might have their doubts or they might not take God seriously because we didn't take God's name seriously. Are you with me? Do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And in, in the Old Testament, in Genesis, people gave names to God after witnessing what God had done for them. But it wasn't until Moses that God revealed His true name, kind of like God giving His first name or His, his personal name. Because Moses asked God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, well, we've heard all kinds of names that God will provide. God is my banner. God is my healer. But what name are we supposed to tell them? What is His name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, this is in Exodus verse 14, in, in chapter 3, God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am who who I am. And that's as close as we can get in the English. In the Hebrew, it's transcribed with the Hebrew letters Yod, He, Vav, He. Some scholars call it the, the Tetragrammaton. In English, the best we can do is capital Y, capital H, capital W, capital H. It's a name so holy that for the Israelites and for the Jews, it would only be uttered by the great high priest in the temple one day a year on the Day of Atonement in the Holy of Holies when they would make sacrifice on behalf to atone for the sins of all of Israel. It was a name that when spoken sounded more like something that was between the very breaths that you take. Yahweh. The name of the Lord your God is holy and must be treated with utmost care. And so God said, I am who I am. In other words, He said, Yahweh. And then He told Moses further, you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord like in all capital letters, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. That means for us too. And this my title for all generations. That includes us too because we're part of all generations. In Exodus 6, God continues to reveal Himself through His name to Moses and God, it's almost like God swears by His own name, or God uses His name as a stamp or, or a mark of His authority and His endorsement of, of choosing of Moses, but more importantly, that when God speaks His name and says, I am the Lord, or I am the Lord your God, or I am who I am, He means business. And then God, it's like His name seals, and then He says, this is what this name means. I am the Lord. So he says it four times in this passage in Exodus 6, 2 to 8. First time, I am the Lord. Then he says this, I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, my personal name, the Lord, I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land in which they resided as aliens. I heard the groaning of the Israelites when the Egyptians are holding them as slaves, and I have remembered my covenant. So when he said, I am the Lord, the next time he hears, I am the Lord, Moses was to remember all those things that God had done in the past. Because God's name recalls God's mighty deeds. Then he says his name again. He says, I am the Lord. Say this to the Israelites. I am the Lord, and I will free you from the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. So, it's not just God's name doesn't just recall what God has done for us, but also 
the promises that God has made of what God will continue to do or what God will do for us now in history, in the here and now, in our very presence. God will go before us. So I am the Lord. When Moses heard that, he also would remember what God has promised to do, to free them, to deliver them, to redeem them, to take them, and to be their God. And also for us. Then he says it again, you shall know, third, that I am the Lord. Here's another stamp of authority. The Lord, your God, who has freed you from the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. See, when God said this to Moses, they hadn't left Egypt yet. But when God speaks His name and gives His authority, His seal of His holiness and His character and His historic mighty acts that will continue, His promises that are precious and can be depended on, He says, I am the Lord. I've already done it. I'm doing it now. I have already freed you from the Egyptians. You're just going to find out that it's true. I will bring you into that land. And then he closes it and he says a fourth time, I am the Lord. The beginning and the end starts with the name of the Lord and His holiness. But another thing that the name of the Lord is for, it's not just for God's authority. It's not just for His promises, His covenant. It's just, just not just to remember what God has done for us or will do for us. But the name of the Lord has a particular venue that it was most appropriately spoken. Anyone want to guess what that is? When should we use the name of the Lord most often? When we worship, when we pray. The name of the Lord is to be central to our worship. In fact, it's not this building that's a sanctuary for us. It's actually the holy name of the Lord our God. We worship in the name of the Lord our our God. We worship as Christians in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the name of Jesus to heal and to set people free from demons. And for the Israelites, there was power in the name of the Lord our God to bring blessing and peace upon God's people, to lead them into life. The name of God was to be a blessing to His children, not a curse. And so, the, the priestly blessing that the Lord spoke to Moses to tell his brother Aaron, the great high priest, and his sons in the tribe of Levi, saying, you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Then he says this in verse 27 in chapter 6 of Numbers. So they shall put my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. We are adorned with the name of the Lord our God as His people. We are adorned with the name of Jesus everywhere we go. It's like that hymn, take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe, in His peace He'll comfort give you. Take it there where, where take it there wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet! Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, precious name, oh how sweet! Oh how sweet! Hope of earth and joy of heaven. The name of the Lord your God, the name of Jesus Christ, brings the presence of God into the here and now and the reality of our lives. It's not just words on a piece of paper or in a book or just words that just come out of our mouths. The name of the Lord our God is holy and has power and authority and historic significance and carries the promises of God and the faithfulness of God. Did you guys sing or speak Psalm 103 in your call to worship today? Where it talked about uh, worship His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Worship His holy name. All that was in me, worship His holy name. And then He says, for the Lord is rich in love and slow to anger. His name is great. His heart is kind. We're going to sing that in 10,000 reasons later. 
But the name of the Lord reveals the character and the virtues and the goodness of God. And if we are going to bear the name of Jesus and the name of the Lord our God, then we had better act out the character of God, that we should be rich in love and slow to anger and full of mercy and grace and truth with the people that we are called to love our neighbors, we love ourselves. Amen? Amen. That if we tell people that we follow Jesus, we better show them Jesus. Because we were created to be idols of the living God, to bear His name and take His presence here on earth so that everywhere we go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news of Jesus Christ. In the, in the story in Acts, in the New Testament, there's an instance where people see the power in Jesus' name, but they misuse Jesus' name in trying to use the power without knowing the person of Jesus. And there were these sons of Sceva who heard about how the name of Jesus was casting out demons, and Paul was using the name of Jesus and healing people and casting out demons. And so when they saw people who were oppressed by demons, they said, we adjure you to get out in the name of Jesus. And the demons turned, and they said, well, we know Jesus, and we've heard of Paul, but who are you? And then they jumped and seized them, and they were worse off than they were before. And they ran away, like, I, th I think the text says that they ran away, like, you know, in their underwear or whatever, completely humiliated and overpowered. But then in Acts, when people like Paul and, and, and Peter come by and they see someone who is asking for help or, or, ask, or they're in need or they're crying out and they're asking for money and he says, gold or silver I can't give you, but what I give to you, I give to you in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk and go and sin no more. And people were healed. Because of the name of Jesus. Jesus told us as his disciples, he says, where two or three or more are gathered in my name, there I will be with you. The name of Jesus brings the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit among his people. The name of Jesus is our sanctuary in which we worship. Amen? Amen. And the name of Jesus is so holy because it means that God will save us from our sins. In Philippians 2, 9 to 11, there's the hymn that says, God highly exalted Jesus and gave Him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In other words, Jesus Christ is the Lord our God. Jesus prayed and was very careful with the name that the Lord our God gave him. He prayed for us as his disciples in John 17, 11 to 12, when he said, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. The name Jesus, God will save us from our sins. Or the name Emmanuel, God with us. And we are given Jesus' name to bear as His children in faith. To be a Christian is to be a little Christ, a little Jesus. And we are animated as God's idols by His Holy Spirit so that we can reveal God's character, His holiness, His love, His mercy, His grace, His kindness, His goodness, and take the name of Jesus with us wherever we go. Amen? Because there is salvation in no one else, Acts 4.12. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. So the name of God carries the companioning presence of God that goes with us the holiness of God that reminds us that we are not God, the authority of God that protects us and gives us integrity and truth and justice, the covenant faithfulness of God that will not let us down and will keep us. The name of God is central to our worship as a community of faith. The name of God is the sanctuary in which we worship 
in spirit and in truth. And when we lift up or take up or speak or invoke the name of God, we must do so with uttermost care and reverence in an attitude of worship for God's glory and not our own. The name of God brings the reality of God's holiness and His character and integrity into the here and now of our history today. We must treat the name of God carefully because God's name is special and holy. And if we care for the name of God, God will care for us in His name. Amen? Amen. So I'd like to invite you to to sing a hymn, and then we're going to have Holy Communion today. But this is a song that's based off of Psalm 103 that we said earlier. It's called 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, Worship His Holy Name. So why don't we stand and worship God in the sanctuary and the holiness of His name. All right. Okay. All right. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I worship Your holy name. I worship Your holy name. Lord, I worship your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, will the ushers bring the... Com- oh, it's already here. Awesome. <clears throat> One of the ways that we enter 
into the sanctuary of God's holy name, into His holy presence, and we recall the great things He has done for us. We're reminded of His character and His goodness, and we are invited to continue to walk with Him in faith following His commandments is through holy communion. And so I invite you, um, Christ invites to His table all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live at peace with God and with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God and one another as we pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done Your will. We have broken Your law. We have rebelled against Your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Right to give, I'm sorry. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere, Father Almighty, to give thanks to you. For you are the creator of heaven and earth, and you revealed your holy name to us through Moses, and then down through the generations, and then finally revealed your true name, Jesus. God will save us from our since Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise you and your holy name and join in our unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of His suffering, His death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant in your holy name by water and the Holy Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave Himself up for us, He took bread. He broke the bread, and He gave it to His disciples, and He said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he blessed it in your holy name, he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink this, drink this in remembrance of me. And so, with your, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at His heavenly banquet. Through Your Son, Jesus Christ, with Your Holy Church, in all honor and glory is Yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, but we all partake of the one loaf. We share in the breaking of the bread as the body of Christ. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And here in the United Methodist Church, this is not my table or the Lorraine United Methodist Church table. This is the Lord's table. And so everyone, anyone is welcome to come forward and to seek to live at peace with God and with one another and taste and see that the Lord is good and find refuge and sanctuary and peace and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. I welcome you. And so at this time, uh, I'd like to serve 
you're going to come down and I will break off a piece for you and give it to you. And then you will dip it. This is called impinction into the cup. But I would like to serve you first, Terry. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you, Patty. Ellen, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Not bad. So as the ushers invite you, please come forward and receive peace in the name of Jesus and his body and blood. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So remember, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. God's name is holy and special, and he has given it to us, so we must handle his name with care. And as we care for his name, he shall care for us. For us. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace as you trust in him in the name of Jesus so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and have a safe 4th of July. Amen. Yeah.
Oh. 